I'm certified nutritionist Mira Calton. And I'm Dr. Jason Calton. Welcome to Calton Nutrition Television and another episode of In Depth, where we explore the stories behind the leaders, visionaries, and innovators changing the world. And today we have a very special guest with us. But before I introduce her, um, do we have any uh, updates for them? Well, we don't really have any updates. Just want to say one thing. If you're enjoying the, the, the things we do here at Call Nutrition Television, whether it's treadmill talk or on the couch talking with us when we're doing our house, um, calls. house calls, or if you're enjoying in depth, make sure to sign up or subscri just subscribe to this YouTube channel and share the information with somebody else out there so they also can be getting the same great nutritional advice that you are. <laughs> Absolutely. Okay, well, let's start off. Okay. Our guest today as I mentioned, is an incredible person. It, her name is Summer Bach, and she's on a mission to help people end their digestive struggles. She teaches people how to cleanse from bad bacteria and rebuild their gut flora, which helps keep them from getting sick, increases their energy, improves their mood. Now, she's ch a trained herbalist at, with a background in microbiology, Just and like, a, like myself, and has studied with some of the best nutritional teachers in the world. Um, Summer teaches the art of fermentation, cleansing, and gut health and she has successfully guided thousands of people to their best health. Now, she is a sought-after speaker on fermentation, herbalism, digestion, and, clean, and cleansing. Her programs include the Probiotic Power Cleanse, Gut Rebuilding, and the world's first fermentationist certification program. That's kind of a... That's a mouthful. That's a mouthful. <laughs> <laughs> That's kind of an interesting... We'll find we'll more about that later, I think. <laughs> Welcome to In-Depth Summer. Thank you. It's really great to be here. I'm excited. Well, we just got to meet you recently at a conference, and um, this is one of the topics that we really don't specialize in. So, and it's so important to our topic because obviously you can't get the micronutrients you need into your gut if you don't have a healthy gut. So, we are thrilled that you would come on and talk to our people about this. Great, yeah. So, I guess we should find out, like, what really set you down on this path that you're going on? What What's your story? Yeah, so, you know, I grew up in the South, and my family was the healthiest family on the block <laughs> because um, we ate tofu, and my mom is a botanist, and she would put wild flowers in our salads. So we were just, like, dubbed the healthiest people on the block. Of course, you know, I still ate Taco Bell every week. I drank Mountain Dew constantly. You know, I was eating... Uh, personal pan pizzas, that was like my favorite thing to do, to go out to eat, you know, yep. and I loved Baskin Robbins, all of this, and, you know, I thought that if I put fake meat on my nachos, that I was doing a good thing for my body, um, and, you know, I mean, this story goes pretty deep, are you ready to go? Yeah, um, no, yeah absolutely. Okay. <laughs> all right, so, you know, Fast forward to when I was 16, I actually got pregnant, had a baby, and I placed him for adoption. And then I entered a, just a huge emotional, like, despair. I mean, it was horrible. It was a really hard time in my life, as you can imagine. Mm. And so instead, uh, I didn't have any resources. Like, I didn't know where else to turn, so I actually ended up starting using drugs. It's kind of one of those really intense times. And... You know, after some years of just using pretty hard drugs and kind of wrecking my body through that process, um, I reached a point where, you know, I had a total vision and I realized, like, I can't, I can't be doing this to myself. I can't be doing this to my body. Yeah. And I actually saw what was happening to me and to the people around me in this waking vision. I mean, it changed, this, like, two minutes changed my life. So I decided to wean myself off of drugs. I did that on my own. And um, and after that, I really had to just watch my body kind of decline in health for the next couple of years, really. I mean, it was, it was incredibly uh, difficult. My liver was toxic. You know, I mean, I was just like struggling with all of this stuff. I mean, you know, so here we go. I mean, this is like the, the sort of the shadow side to all of this stuff, right? Like sometimes people have these really intense stories. And, and what's important about this is that I've learned is that it is this kind of like emotional intensity and various things have happened in our lives that do end up creating a lot of the health problems that people struggle with. Um, so... Yeah, I mean, it was just, it was pretty crazy. I ended up with multiple chemical sensitivity, so I couldn't walk down the laundry detergent aisle um, without having a migraine headache. I ended up with allergies to all different kinds of food to the point where it was down to, like, 
mm, 20 or 30 foods that I could eat without getting a reaction. Wow. wow. And um, I was breaking out in hives and rashes. And I didn't know what to do about it. I went to doctors. I tried all this stuff. I went to chiropractors. I went to acupuncturists. I did allergy clearing. I was doing all of these things. Um, and I ended up going to herbal medicine school, actually. I started studying uh, herbs and healing. And during that process, I learned how to do a cleanse. And that changed my life, completely changed my life. I felt like a wool blanket was pulled out of my brain. I could see the world clearly around me, and I was like, oh, this is how normal people feel and function. Wow. Yeah. So it was almost immediate for you with that first cleanse. It was, I mean, it was, I didn't even realize how good I could feel. Right. To be honest with you. I had no clue how good I could feel. I had never felt that good even previous to any of this. Like, I'm not joking. It, it was like another level. Right. So, um... It was a pretty big deal. I ended up going to school, studying to go to med school. Um, that's where I studied microbiology and um, got really into it. And my health conditions, really, with the stress of school, kept getting worse. Um, unfortunately, not better. <laughs> so, you know, I go, to my, I go to my doctor's office and I'm like, hello, can you please help me? My eyes are swollen. You know, I've like dripping just like there's pollen gusts like yellow pollen just like drifting through the air and I just feel like I'm dying and she looks at me and she goes what are you doing here and I'm like what what do you mean what am I doing here you're my doctor and she's like no really what are you doing here this, this is what's gonna happen like I'm gonna write a prescription I don't think it's gonna do anything anyway um, and you're not gonna fill it so why are you here and she was sending her clients to me at this point. I, I actually had, I went to the Institute for Integrative Nutrition. You know, I was seeing clients as an herbalist, as a health coach, right. and figuring my stuff out. But it was such a slow road for me. But I was still health coaching her patients and having great results. You know, and here I am looking for this, like, missing piece. Like, what is going on? Why can't I heal? Um, and I left the office, I left her office that day. And I think that was really the pivotal uh, moment because... I decided at that moment that I was going to stop looking outside for somebody to save me. Right. You know, yep. I needed to listen to myself. I needed to learn how to listen and tap in. And I did. And I can tell you more about what I did throughout this interview. But, yeah. Well, that's fantastic. First of all, it's a very brave story to come forward and, and to share with us. So thank you. Yeah. And we find so many. I mean, I also had to go all the way to the pits of being very ill before I went on this path. And we find that so many people that are out there helping people today really have similar or, you know, they're all different stories, but we've all been on this path where something changed the way we looked at nutrition and we had to take care of it ourselves. Yeah. Let's talk a little bit about, you mentioned um, medications and drugs and the effects that that has on the body. You talk about over-the-counter medications uh, as an actual indicator. What do they indicate? What do you mean by that? Well, so something that I've noticed is that you go down the aisle at Walgreens or something like that, and there is a digestive aisle, right? There are medications down the entire aisle from, you know, above your head to the floor, um, from stool softeners to, like, indigestion, sort of like Tums, like Rolaids, all of these sort of things. It blew my mind recently when, I see, when I've noticed that that aisle has basically tripled in the last decade. Um, you know, and something I realize is that when you're taking an over-the-counter medication, it indicates that you are sort of just suppressing symptoms that you could actually heal. Right. Like it's an indicator that you could heal from what is going on there. These over-the-counter medications are like a, I, I was like putting a Band-Aid on a broken bone. They say that all the time. Absolutely. The Band-Aid. Yep. So you are obviously when you were doing the drugs and you were you started using that same band aid for your emotional self at that at that point as well. Exactly, that's exactly what it is. It's an emotional band aid, and I think that's something that most people don't realize. You know, when people are like that, people are constantly self medicating. I mean, maybe not everybody's doing it as extreme as I did, but they're using sugar or they're using massive amounts of coffee or you know, like all this stuff that's. Basically, what it's doing is it's imbalancing the body. It's really affecting the little friendly gut bacteria that I'm excited to share and talk about with you. Yeah. Yeah. So okay. So you did this cleanse and it was amazing for you. Mm -hmm. And then you started started looking and listening to yourself, and that brought you to fermentation. 
Yeah, so I, you know, yeah, the connection, I went back home after meeting with my doctor and was like, okay, like, this is all on me now. Like, uh, and, okay, if I have 100% res responsibility, it's going to happen. Yeah. <laughs> so I started doing some more research, and I really delved in. I was like, what do I need to do here? Like, what... What, what do all these symptoms that I have have in common? Like I was treating my liver, you know, I was treating my digestive problems, I was treating the hives with like anti-inflammatories, like I was tr treating all these different, almost like segmented parts. And what I realized by delving in a little bit further and really doing some research was that all of those issues that I was dealing with stemmed from my gut and from the imbalance in my gut. Not a, a toxic liver, it was my gut. Right. And when I realized that, I was like, okay, what are we doing here? Like, as an herbalist, you always want to know, you know, what did people do 500 or 1,000 years ago? You know, how did my ancestors have a healthy gut? And I was taking some probiotics, and they were helping, actually, a little bit. Um, so I asked myself, okay, what's the whole food form of probiotics? Right. And... Right. Uh, you know, I realized that, it, you know, through research that raw unpasteurized sauerkraut, and for, there's a lot of fermented foods as well, are the whole food form of probiotics. And I was like, aha, this is what my ancestors did. Yeah, and they taste really good. Like, I used to swear that I would not eat sauerkraut. I mean, I don't know if, like, as a kid, I thought it tasted funny once or something. But I, before yeah, we used got to married, it. I used to, like, no way. And now I have it, like, all the time. We eat it. <laughs> Every week for sure, almost every day, really. So it's one of our favorite foods out there. Is that your favorite form of the fermented food? Yeah, the raw and pasteurized sauerkraut is absolutely my favorite because it has, is dairy-free, um, which is really nice. And the kinds of probiotics that are in sauerkraut are actually just some of the perfect ones to bring into your body and start basically rebuilding the gut flora. Yeah. You know, of course, we traveled around the world to over 134 countries, living with the remote tribes, trying to figure out what they were doing to be healthy. And we saw a lot of this fermentation going on and taking place and the different things that they, they did they there with the tribes. Things. Yeah. So this was a, a major part of how they stayed healthy back in the, with our ancestors, but how they still stay healthy even today. Now, sometimes you talk about and often draw pictures of something that you call the human <laughs> sewer. Tell us about this. Okay, so, you know, humans and bacteria have lived in symbiosis for forever. Like, you know, since we've been around, we have had bacteria living in and on our bodies. In fact, ten times the amount of bacteria as human cells, which is amazing. They outnumber us ten to one. Like, that blows my mind. And yeah. the majority of those bacteria live in our gut. And so as long as we're healthy and we're eating food that they want to eat and our, you know, our stress levels are all right, <laughs> you know, some stress is fine. It's not like you have to be just sitting back at the beach all day long, but we can't be overrun by it. Right. And then the third factor is really just making sure that, you know, you aren't wiping them out using antibiotics too many times. That's a really key component of this. So as long as we have a healthy gut, do what? So also eating meat that's been fed a million antibiotics and such. Exactly. Well, yeah. Yeah, good point. I mean, right? So there's antibiotics not just coming from the ones that you take. Yeah. Right. Which it really ups the ante there. So, you know, we have this, hopefully, this really healthy gut bacteria system. So there's over 200 different species of microorganisms growing in our gut, living there, and they are digesting our food for us. They are supercharging our nutrition. They are protecting us, our immune system, because they're creating this force field all throughout our digestive tract. So if we eat something that has bacteria in it, they will keep those bacteria from growing. They literally create their own antibiotics, like really safe antibiotics to keep other bacteria from growing. And they produce vitamins right inside our gut. Like they produce K and B vitamins. And these vitamins are really challenging to digest when you eat them because they break down a lot of times in the hydrochloric acid. And so if they're just sitting there on site making these vitamins for you to absorb immediately, it's incredible. So they are like absolutely <laughs> essential to our health. Yeah. That's the ideal situation. I was going to share with everyone one quick story. When we were in India traveling, um, you know, everyone gets sick in India. They call it deli belly for a reason. Everybody gets something because our stomachs just aren't used to the bacteria that's on their foods. You know, we don't we don't have the same the same you know gut bacteria all waiting for it. 
So we tried everything. I mean, like Jason got sick, and of course, you know, there's the American doctor looks at this. Okay, here's a bag of you know your I don't even know your anti diarrhea like all these little weird concoctions that are in the U.S. grocery stores. So then nothing is working, and we go to the doctor at the hotel, and he gives Jason a vial, a vial of liquid that is pure probiotic for exactly the strain of what Jason has. He literally took a sip. Yeah, it was just a little blue vial, about this big, and I had been feeling bad, so bad, really that sick. you know <laughs> I wanted to die for three days, right? So in just immediately, he gave me the vial, I just drank it down, and within seconds, and I, even still today, I don't even know how it could happen that quick. Within seconds, I felt better, and it never came back. You just thought his body knew the minute he drank it, it was no. just like, okay, everything's going to be fine. Incredible. And that's what it was. It was just yeah. a whole bunch of the right bacteria to fight the problem. Yeah. Isn't that, I mean, to me, it's just amazing. I mean, it's a whole new frontier when it comes to health and, and healing, when you think about it, that we would actually employ, you know, these organisms to do this work for us because they have all, like, we have always been their natural habitat. Right. Right. You it know. is so important. I mean, we really have to start thinking about our, our gut bacteria. And you mentioned the just great reasons. First of all, they help you to digest your food so you can get the nutrition out of it. And then they produce some of the vitamins that we absolutely need for our health. So, yeah. I mean, there just isn't any. If you're out there thinking, you know, I don't really need to worry it about gut health. <laughs> yeah, I exercise. I eat good. I'm sure this isn't that important. This is so important. This is why we're one of the reasons we're so happy to have you on here today. Because I don't think people talk about no. gut health very much. So we just want to, okay, we're going to start with this really fermentation 101. Yeah. What is it and why are, pro and what does it create provides and why are they important? Yeah. Okay, so let's see. Fermentation 101. Well, let's talk about the dark side really quick of the gut. Like what happens if somebody does take antibiotics too many times, which I did, like throughout my childhood, took lots of antibiotics. Um, and stress, which, you know, for me, my situation, I was experiencing such high stress in school. It was crazy through the roof. And then, um, you know, the third component being processed foods, essentially, foods that are not feeding the right bacteria. So those three are like what pretty much totally erase that really beautiful, healthy gut flora situation, this wonderful ecosystem. I call it a lush rainforest. You want the lush rainforest. <laughs> Otherwise, you slash and burn with all of these things, and you create almost like a concrete jungle, right? right. And so um, when you have that situation, you end up with all these bad bacteria living in the gut. And those bad bacteria that are living there, they're eating the food that you eat. They're excreting, and their excretions are incredibly toxic for us. Yep. And that's what the problem is, right? That's what I call the human sewer situation. And when they when they excrete those toxins, just like the B vitamins and the K vitamins that the friendly bacteria produce, those those excretions get filtered right into our bloodstream. Go straight into our bloodstream from the intestines, go get filtered by the liver. And then our body just starts getting inundated with this, and that's what's causing most people to really get sick. It's almost like this internal toxicity that's going on. So Fermented, fermented foods and like fermentation 101 is such an amazing antidote to this because it's exactly like what you talked about with this vial of probiotics. Right. You eat food that not only has these probiotics in it, but it also has the substrate. It has all of their favorite food in it. You know, this sauerkraut, this cabbage, it's all there. So you're actually giving them more to grow on inside your body. You know, so this is like one of the best ways to get these probiotics into your body. There's like food to survive the mission in, so they can do their job once they're there. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah, that's exactly right. All right. So what should people do like if they want to? If they want to start to improve their gut health, you, we mentioned sauerkraut. What are some other things that they could incorporate into their daily activities? Yeah, I mean, I'm a really big fan of um, getting a wide diversity of fermented foods into the diet. You know, I mean, sauerkraut is my favorite because, first of all, it's easy to make. I think everybody should try to make it at least once because it will change your life. I'm not kidding. You Do you have, like, a favorite recipe you can share? You know, my favorite way to make it, I mean, it's a little bit more complicated than, just, you know, you want to make sure you're doing it exactly right, but you basically shred up some cabbage and some carrots and onions. That's probably my favorite recipe. And you want to probably do, you want to get, like, a gallon jar or something. And you would put about three tablespoons of salt in it, mix it all together, and just smash it down in there. 
That's it. Like, no water, no nothing. And you smash it down, and you want to put, like, a cloth over the top so that nothing flies in there. And you're going to put some sort of weight down in it, something that holds it under the brine. And this sits for three to six weeks on your counter, and then you eat it. And so that blows, like, you know, that's already breaking all the rules of food safety right there. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I think everybody should try to make it because this is, it connects, like you've probably had this experience of people processing foods in these ways without refrigeration, okay. right? Like <laughs> when you traveled. Oh, yeah. yeah. There's, no, there's no refrigerator out in no, the no. islands. <laughs> yeah. So people have figured out ways to make food last longer. And interestingly enough, all of these natural ways of preservation, most of them at least, rely on some sort of bacteria Right. to help keep it preserved. And, yeah. and then we eat those bacteria and then they support us. But yeah, I mean, there's, there's so many different kinds of fermented foods that you can eat. So like miso is a good one. Um, mm. I highly recommend kefir and like a lot of the dairy products that have probiotics in them. Um, yeah. But my favorites are wild fermented foods. Like I love fermented foods that, um, you know, aren't, made in a laboratory. Right. That's where I really, I love that. I feel like there's something so important for our bodies when we're eating wild fermented foods like sauerkraut and like kefir and things like that. Yeah, I mean we talk often about reconnecting with food and, and getting the relationship with food again. That's one of the things that we saw in these remote tribes. They had a direct relationship with the food yeah. that they were eating, that they were creating, that they were making. And like you mentioned, it's, it's kind of ironic that we're also afraid that when we leave food out that this, we're, the bacteria is going to get on it, it's going to make us sick. And it's kind of ironic that it's the bacteria that will can cure some of our gut sickness when we learn how to, fer how to yeah. ferment our foods correctly. We, we're not saying to everyone to go and leave, no, don't uh, leave their, their meat pork or their yeah. sitting on the counter overnight. Yeah. Do it <laughs> this correctly. Is not, this is not the right way to do it. Yes. <laughs> no, I mean, it's really important to get trained in it because this yeah. is like something that we have kind of lost, right? And you mentioned not liking sauerkraut when you were younger, but sauerkraut when we were younger was all pasteurized. Right. Okay. You know? I mean, it was, it was like canned and pasteurized and all of these bacteria were killed and it doesn't taste the same as this fresh stuff. No, I and most people don't realize that. It's you like brown and stringy. It's, yes. not, it's not at all like the crispness you get from a really good sauerkraut you know, that's raw and done, done properly. Yeah, and so I just want to, like, the people should, when, they, when you go look for sauerkraut to buy, make sure it's in the refrigerated section, make sure it says raw and unpasteurized, and just start with like two forkfuls with each meal. And don't okay. do it, go too crazy because you'll know this. <laughs> what, is, what, are, uh, what are your favorite brands? Do you have any that you recommend? Um, there's a national brand called Farmhouse Culture. I think theirs is fantastic. But what's really cool is that there's small sauerkraut companies popping up all over the country. So I actually own a sauerkraut company out in Washington, like Pacific Northwest. And, you know, we, but we don't ship outside of that region. So if you're in that area, go check out Oli Kraut. Um, but, you know, all over, like down in the Bay Area, there's Cultured Pickle Shop. This woman has the most incredible fermented foods. They're amazing. Um, on the in New York, there's like Hawthorne Valley. So there's just like all these different companies. So wherever you are, go to your local health food store and ask like, what is the local sauerkraut company here? Yeah, okay, that's a great tip. I think that's a great idea. We're always recommending people, you know, eat local food. And you know, with sauerkraut, now I, we do buy bubbies. We like bubbies sauerkraut. It's not, raw. Uh, it's not raw, but you know, that's the one we get from the store. But I think it's a great idea to go and get local sauerkraut. Um, from people. Now, what about drinks? A lot of people think, you know, what I drink a fermented beverage. Is that is that the same, or what do you? How do you feel about those? Okay, so that's a great question because so when it comes to fermented beverages, um, the main reason that you are well, there's there's basically three different kinds of fermented foods, and one of them is a fermented food that's rich with probiotics. You're drinking it or eating it for the probiotics. And those probiotics inoculate your system and help get rid of that human sewer situation. Um, the second reason that you would eat or drink a fermented food product, they may not have probiotics in them, but they are going to help really create a good environment for the healthy probiotics to live. Um, you know, miso is a good example of this. Miso has some probiotics, but, but not a ton. You know, but it's actually a, a food that helps build that ecosystem up. Sure. Um, and 
so kombucha is one that really comes to mind. People ask me about kombucha all the time. There are some kombucha companies that add probiotics to their kombucha. Mm -hmm. So then you're getting the probiotics. But most kombucha doesn't have probiotics in it. And that's something that most people don't realize. Yeah, so, by the way. Yeah. yeah. It's it's a caffeine, it's made of black tea, sugar, and there's there's alcohol that's produced in the process. So it's kind of like this speed ball and people are totally addicted to it and I understand why. And you know, what we've also learned through some recent studies is that the sugar content of kombucha doesn't actually break down. Um, thank you. Yeah. Thank you for saying that. We've been trying to tell people that basically since the book Rich Food Poor Food came out, we're just like, you know what, you're still drinking sugar. So, yeah. from the expert. Yeah. The, the caffeine doesn't break down either. And people say that. So, when you drink kombucha, you're having a caffeinated beverage that has the exact same amount of grams of sugar as it did when you started. And the reason that it's the same, even though the fermentation process has caused the bacteria to use that sugar, they take sucrose, which is a disaccharide, and just after that fermentation period, all they did was break it apart. Right. And so this, all the sugar is still present, you know, the exact same amount, actually. Um, so that's a big problem for people. And it, I think there's, I, I worry when it comes to diabetics and sugar sensitive people that are drinking this, thinking, like, oh, this is a health food, and they're, they're chugging 16 ounces. Kombucha has a place, you know, and I think it has a place in people's diets. It's usually like a four ounce or less shot. And they come in 20 ounce bottles. Right. Yeah, you would not. That. You'd have like a four ounce shot at the most, and it's not going to be for people who are sensitive to sugar or addicted to sugar. This is going to be a little bit more for people who like have gout, or you know, people who need to like kind of start breaking some stuff up in their system. Their their bodies have gotten like a little bit more calcified. You think about some of these situations, and that works really well for these folks. These are like I think of like my grandpa who like didn't have a big sweet tooth. You know, he did his three squares a day. Had his gout, that's like the perfect thing for him. But for the for everybody else who's really into soda, it's more of the same. However, I do think it's a fantastic way to get people off of soda. Yeah. Right. Well, we've been you know we've been kind of hesitant to recommend kombucha for a couple of reasons. First, the sugar, and we you know we're big uh, believers in getting rid of all the sugar out of your diet whenever you know as much as possible. Secondly, the sugar oftentimes comes from a genetically modified source, and this right. is something else that people aren't thinking about. And of course, when we're talking about sauerkraut or some of these other fermented foods, we, there's no sugar that goes in there. You said it's just basically the water, the vegetables, and the salt, and you cover it. Is that correct? That's exactly right. Yeah. Yeah. So there Much are some, better options. There are some other beverages out there. There's one called Kavita. <laughs> um, that's a fermented coconut. Um, coconut water that she uses a stevia rather than sugar to ferment it. So that's maybe an option if somebody wants to drink a beverage like that. Yeah, I think Kavita is a great one um, to use for that reason. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. I mean. We've got coupons on our website for anyone who goes to the Richard Resource Center. You can find some more information about Kavita there. We, we love right. it. Yeah. yeah. So basically, you're saying that you should go have maybe one or two tablespoons, as I said, a day to start off. Is that the basically the healthy dosage? Yeah, I mean that's a good place to start. Um, and then you're eating it with each meal, and you're giving, you know, basically during that meal, it, everything's going to get more broken down because you added the probiotics in with that meal. Um, I would say two forkfuls per meal is a good amount. It, after about a week or so, once your body has adjusted to this new uh, basically microorganism that's hanging out around your body, um, then you can up the amount. If you wanted to have it as a side salad with like, I don't know, whatever else you're eating, then I think you have a good option there. And what about kids? Awesome for kids. Kids and dogs, strangely, love sauerkraut. Um, I have so many friends who use it as their dog treats. Um, and I haven't tried that yet. That's a good idea. <laughs> yeah, they love it. Um, but kids, I, I've been blown away. I've watched a baby, like when we were at the farmer's market for Oli Kraut, I watched a baby drop a freaking cookie <laughs> in order to eat the sauerkraut. And I was like, why don't we have this on video, people? Exactly. Who's got the camera for that one? I love the name Holy Crowd. Anyway, that's great. Everybody's got to check that out if they're in that area. Now, one another thing that people do in the morning. Of course, most people wake up in the morning, and if they're following some kind of a healthy diet, they might grab yogurt or Greek yogurt. But you mentioned kefir, and I think we should talk a little bit about that because the difference. This is a great way that people could swap out the yogurt and 
drink or eat the kefir, and there's so many more beneficial bacteria in kefir, isn't that correct? That is correct, absolutely. Do you want me to get a little bit purist here? Cause no, purist, that's yeah. fine. Okay. Yeah. Because, okay, so there's a couple things. So kefir, I think kefir that's sold in the stores is great. You're getting a lot of great beneficial bacteria from it. But it isn't true kefir. So the kefir that all the studies have been done on is made from kefir grains. And that's gluten-free. There's no actual, like, grain involved. It's just what they're right. called. They look like little cauliflower. Like yours, yeah. <laughs> yeah, globules. And they're amazing. And this, honestly, is the way that you're supposed to make kefir. You get some milk, preferably actually raw milk, and yep. you drop it right down in, and you let these organisms do take over for like 24 to 48 hours, and you have seriously one of the healthiest beverages on the planet. Yep. And the same, it, we, the same way we make yogurt, I can make kefir then? I have to buy the kefir grains. Exactly. Huh. Yep. And it's, I mean, there's just been studies after studies after studies that show the anti-cancer effects, like, the, you know, just the way that it helps to regenerate the gut. It's amazing. Yeah, yeah it's yeah. an amazing thing. I, and I, I highly recommend people try. Now, do you have a recipe where they could follow this, you know, you know kind of have some way to go to your website and learn how to make things, some of the things we talked about today, or...? Yeah, well, I mean, you, if you go to summerbach.com, there is a lot of resources there. There's um, di many different blog posts talking about this stuff. I have recipes for sauerkraut, things like that. Um, and then, yeah, I think that would be the best place to start. You know, I don't have recipes up for kefir. That's something that we do in my fermen fermentationist certification training program. So let's so. talk about that. So who can do that, and how does that work? Yeah, so that is a great program for people who are just – basically want to nerd out on fermented foods. You know, they want to know not just like how to make sauerkraut, how to make kefir, how to make yogurt. They want to know all of it. You know, they want to learn how to do more advanced stuff like making miso and things like that. Um, and the program goes pretty in-depth into who should be eating each ferment and who shouldn't be. Because I don't believe that every ferment, like every person should be eating every single fermented food. You know, it really, you have to look at your body, you have to look at your ancestry, you kind of have to see what works well for the health conditions that you have, okay. and, you know, just tailor it to that situation. Um, and so that's what, we, that's what we train people how to do in that program. It's a great program for wellness practitioners. It's an exceptional program for, like, health coaches or acupuncturists, people who want to further uh, their knowledge base to help their clients. Mm -hmm. And is it open for lay people as well, or do you have to have a certification in some kind of a health or medical you know, certification. No, yeah, no, it's open for lay people as well. Anybody who wants to just get really excited about this, we have people who come into the program and start their own fermented foods companies. You know, uh, they're like, great. Let's go. I think that we are gonna um, grab some of those um, kefir grains and yeah. maybe do a video about how that turns out, so that everyone can see. Because we make yogurt, but I have not tried kefir yet. Yeah. Yeah, I think we're yeah, absolutely. That would be a lot of fun. All right, well, let's sw let's switch gears a little bit here, and this what is something we like to do a little <laughs> bit. Um, well, I would just ask. We we want to get to know you on a personal level, so sometimes we ask some personal questions. Uh, so if you don't mind, uh, we have a couple that we like to ask. Huh. What would you do? Where where would you go on a dream vacation? So outside of work now, what would you do, do you, uh, as a dream vacation? My current dream vacation is Australia. Um, I'm following a bunch of surfers on Instagram, and <laughs> their lives look amazing. Like, <laughs> they get up every day and go surfing, and I swear that's all they do. In Australia, the weather is perfect year-round. It's a little yeah. hot right now, but that's, that's where I want to go. I just want to go there and go surfing and have fun. And here's a food question. What is your favorite, like, cheap food? Obviously not something that's fermented. We're going to choose though, something that, it doesn't have to be a cheap, but what's your, like, go-to pleasure food? My pleasure food. Um, let's see. Uh, like, if I was to go out at a restaurant or something like that? Yeah. Duck curry. Ooh, Ooh I, I love, love curry. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I just <laughs> love duck curry. It's a thing. I made curry last night for dinner. Yep, it was fantastic. <laughs> So I maybe already know the next answer, the next question. We ask you, you know, what other job would you do if you could do anything else? It sounds like you might want to hang out in Australia and surf. Actually, you know what? I have, I have a funny, I have two careers lined up for the future, like when I retire or something. I don't know, but <laughs> one of them, I would be a matchmaker. Ah. I would just, like, hook people up 
all day long. Are you um, good at that? Have you already done that? I'm so good at it. I'm really good at it. I don't even, it's just a natural ability. And I'm good at like getting it to work without anybody even knowing that they're on a blind date. It's awesome. Right. Oh, that's good. Cool. Mira has that. Too, <laughs> I, I have a few yeah. marriages yeah. under my belt. Yeah, she does. Ooh, nice. You got some. You got some stuff on your resume there. That's good. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and what's the second job? The second one, I would be an animal rehabilitator. I think I would go back to school and go get it like a veterinarian's license, and just like work with wild animals. Oh. Yeah. In Australia. Well, yeah, in Australia. <laughs> near wild the beach. animal surfers <laughs> in exactly. Australia. Okay, well, I think we are out of time today, yes. but so basically we're going to hack this up and send everyone over to your website. Just to summerbach.com is the best spot? That's the best spot for sure. Absolutely. And everything is there. Info about the fermentationist program, talk about gut rebuilding, all of that. Well, we can't thank you enough for coming today. I mean, really, this is fantastic for us because we need to get more involved with it. We need to remind ourselves sometimes that you know, that we can learn more and that we can be doing more and make our guts healthier as well. So thank you for your information. Absolutely. It's been a pleasure. Thanks.